The most popular seven-seater MPV in Malaysia has finally got an all-new replacement. This is the second-generation Perodua Alza. And according to Perodua, they received about 40,000 bookings in less than two months. Are you one of them? Believe it or not, the outgoing Perodua Alza has been around for 13 years with about 400,000 units sold since its introduction in 2009. That's even before Autobus was around. Perodua Alza Baharu, kereta juga MPV. The first generation Alza was based on the Daihatsu Bund Luminas or Toyota Paso Sete, which is basically an extended version of a MyV that sits 7. This second-generation Perodua Alza is based on the Daihatsu Xenia and Toyota Avanza, developed on the DNGA or Daihatsu New Global Architecture, just like the Ativa. There is also an upmarket cousin that will be coming to Malaysia, the Toyota Veloz. What makes the Alza such a popular national car? Well, it started from 55,000 ringgit to 64,000 ringgit back in 2009. That's a lot of car for its money, and it can fit seven people. Fast forward to today, the Alza in 2022 starts from 62,500 ringgit with the Alza X, 68,000 ringgit with the Alza H, and 75,500 ringgit with the top of the spec Alza AV, which is this one right here. Yeah, it's a bit more expensive than before thanks to inflation, our weaker currency, but most importantly, it now comes with a whole lot of features. This particular unit costs about 4,500 ringgit more because it is pimped up with the gear up accessories such as the prime body kit, door visors, prime seat covers, LED scuff plates, coil mats, boot tray, and also footwell lighting. Even with all that specced in, it still costs less than 80,000 ringgit. According to Purodua, about 70% of new Alza buyers opted for the 2,500 ringgit gear up body kit. Good for you guys because it looks great! So what is it up against? There is the Mitsubishi Expander, Honda BRV, Proton Exora, Toyota Rush, and also its very own Peridua Aros, all well below 100,000 ringgit. The second generation Peridua Alza does look grander and larger than before. That's because it is. It is now 205 mm longer, 35 mm wider, and 50 mm taller. The wheelbase, however, is unchanged at 2,750 mm. Most of the new Alza buyers went straight for the top of the range Alza AV. So today, we will be focusing only on the popular variant. And we're gonna find out why this is such a hottie. I do have to say, it does look quite good. And even though it is not very big, it has got presence. With the lines all around, creases, and also the angular design together with the body kit, it does look very handsome. I do like the new grille design with the chrome strip that runs across it. The headlights are LED, and these DRLs are also turn indicators, which are sequential, just like the Ativa. It does bring up the premiumness of the car. Down there, LED fog lights, and below it, together with the skirting, are a pair of position lights, which animates as you start the car. Che, macam Night Rider pula. The rims are 16 inch in size with 19560 tyres. It does look nice, but maybe it would be better if it is slightly bigger. Abang Gan from Padulaju upgraded his to 17 inch at King of Rims. You can check that content out. From the side, it doesn't look like the usual MPV. It is not very tall, it rides really low, and the ground clearance is only 160 mm. So it is good for elderly folks and kids to get on and off. I do like the short front overhang with the flattened nose. And because this car is longer than before, that part is quite obvious at the rear overhang. The taillights are LED, but it would be nice if this red LED strip runs across the tailgate. But I'm pretty sure someone out there has come up with a mod already. So this entire look, together with the optional spoiler from Gear Up and also the skirting at the bottom, it works for me. I think it looks really good. The cabin gives a very good first impression once you get in here. That's before you start to explore more. It is roomy and you are greeted by things you only see in premium cars. Nice steering wheel, digital cluster, sharp and big head unit, 
all to distract you in a good way from the hard plastics around you. Like literally everything else around you. Well, except for the roof liner and also the seats. Ah. The seats come with the gear up seat covers, by the way. Looks very nice. Everything else. Here, 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 here. Hard plastics. But then again, take a while to stop and remind yourself that this is essentially a budget car. You need to pay attention to those things that distracted you from the start. For example, the steering wheel. I do like the design of the steering wheel. It doesn't look budget at all. It has the settings for ACC, LKC, KFC, MACD, but it doesn't come with pedal shifters. That's given. One thing though, it still doesn't come with telescopic steering adjustment. So you can only go up or down. But actually, it's never an issue for me, you see. Maybe because I have got a perfect arm-leg body ratio. I never had to do all that. I don't know, I'm just too perfect, I guess. Now, the middle cluster is digital. It came from the Ativa. There are two displays on the right, only the speedometer, which is Fawn 200, very big. On the left is where you get to choose different designs and also all the settings and informations are all there. Now, the highlight in this cabin has to be this thing right here. This head unit houses two of Perudua's first. One of it is surround view monitor. So your car has four cameras all around and you still get to choose what view you want. Now the second thing is Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. When the car was first launched, Apple CarPlay wasn't available, but now it is official. It is now available in the car. The original interface for the head unit, there's nothing much to play with, not very fancy, but with your iPhone connected to this, you'll be a very happy owner. So moving along, as you move away from all the fancy stuff, it gets a bit sadder. The climate control setting is from the Ativa, that's fine. It is on this huge black gloss panel, which has got nothing else on it other than your engine start-stop button. Also, one of Perudua's first as well is the electronic parking brake. You get to lock and unlock the doors here as well, the central locking, moving along, armrests with a very small space inside. Speaking of space, I will talk about the storage later on. Now, let's go check out the back. It is actually quite roomy back here. And one thing I do realise, the seat is actually positioned higher than the seats in front. So you get a very nice view all around. The plastic panels continues back here for the entire door panel. But I do like it that they have a cup holder right here. And also at the bottom for your bottles. The seat covers come with three slots on each side. So you've got plenty of space for your gadgets and magazines. A decent cup holder in the middle, two USB charging ports. The seats are actually pretty decent. The headrest is actually pretty nice. And you can even slide it front or back, like that. So if you have stuff at the back or you have passengers at the back, you can adjust it for them. Or else, you do have the entire space for yourself. Now, if you don't have a passenger in the middle, you can actually have your private armrest. Ah, it's large and comfortable. I do like this idea because it makes it area for the passengers at the back. Speaking of area, you do get two large blowers on the roof. So this part in the middle sucks in air and it blows out here with cooling coal inside. So the air is actually cold, so that's a nice touch. And if you don't have any passengers behind you, you can also do this. Ah, eh, the tongue Ah, that's okay, it's nice. This is one of the things I like about the new Alza. To get into the third row seats, you can just tumble the seats. Uh -huh. Let me just do this one as well. It's that simple. Once you do that, you get this huge area and you just simply climb in naturally. Now, there are a few seats configurations you can play with. This is one of them. You can either leave the seats like that and have a Lexus LM feel, or this is for you to carry your flower pots around, your pets, cats or dogs. But if you have passengers in front, you can have your boss seat. Lah. So, you need to put this seat back on. Now, this seat in front of me is positioned all the way to the back. My knees are touching the seat. But of course, if my passenger in front of me is kind enough to move forward, I will still have a lot of space. How's the squatting effect? Actually, I'm not really squatting, so that's great. Because a lot of 5 plus 2 or 7 seaters, you do get squatting effect back here. So this is fine and comfortable. There are two cup holders here and here. You get a 12 volt socket. You get a slot here, maybe for your phone. There are no air vents back here, but 
those blowers in front should be sufficient for the passengers back here. As for the boot, with the third row seat up, you do get a pretty decent space back here. It is larger than before. Now, down here, you do get a secret compartment for your valuables if you want to hide it away. But uh, I just realized you can't even put a laptop here, maybe an iPad. Where's the spare tire, you ask? It is stored underneath the car. It is a full-size 16-inch tire. I've checked that. Now, if you're using an Alza as a five-seater all the time, you can just always fold the seats down and you are practically driving a wagon. Lots of space, larger than before. And as usual, if you need more space, second row, you can flatten it or tumble it up. You get all the space you want. Now to the things I don't like about this car. The all new Alza comes with keyless entry, but it is only for the driver's side. On the passenger side, you let. So you need to use the key to unlock and press twice, remember. The four mats that come with this car are from Gear Up and they are optional. And they are only coil mats. I think the trap ones look better, lighter and smells better too. These two large blowers at the back here are great and they come with individual flaps. However, these flaps, they do nothing. I can't feel any wind direction change, nothing, 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 nothing. Now let's talk about storage. It is a bit lacking, especially for this center console area. There should be at least a slot for us to put in our phone. But instead, you get these two little slots on the side, which is a bit unnatural for us to put our phone. As for cup holders, there is one hidden nicely away here on the passenger side. But on the driver's side, you get a bowl. It does look like a handle that you hold on to when you're driving, which is not. It is a bit too shallow for a cup holder. It's a bit too wide for a kind of drink. So I'm not quite sure why they designed it that way. Now to the things I like about this car. If you're a single driver, especially a lady, by using the keyless entry to enter the car, it only unlocks the driver's side, so you don't get a stranger jumping into your car from the other end. So it works as a safety feature. But if it is a friend, just press unlock twice on the key fob. If it is an angry spouse, tap a kick faster or else. There's a feature in the meter cluster that allows you to set reminders. So there are 10 slots, which is enough to set birthdays for all your 6 other passengers. And there are 4 more to go. Unlike the Ativa that doesn't come with the built-in smart tech device, the new Alza comes with the RFID sticker. So you don't have to buy it, just need to activate it yourself. Now I know what I can do with this. You can grow a plant in it. Unlike the Antiva, the Alza doesn't have a turbo. So instead, it uses a naturally aspirated 1.5 litre four-cylinder engine with a DCVT gearbox, just like the one in the updated Myvi and also the Ativa. It makes 105 horsepower and 138 newton meters of torque. What's impressive is with only one litre of fuel, you can travel up to 22 kilometers. So at today's rate of RON95 at 2 ringgit and 5 cents, it only costs you about 32 ringgit to drive into Singapore from KL. And if you were to divide it with seven people in the car, that's only about 4 ringgit and 50 cents. It's so cheap. According to Perudua, the DCVT gearbox improves fuel efficiency by 30% as compared to its predecessor. The dual mode CVT or DCVT is the world's first split gear developed by Daihatsu. Instead of having a launch gear like Toyota's direct shift CVT to efficiently get the car off the line, Daihatsu's dual mode CVT apply a set of planetary gears for high speed output. This setup makes it more efficient and it reduces load on the CVT. As for safety, the all new Alza has achieved a 5 star ASEAN NCAP rating and that's very impressive. All three variants come with 6 airbags as standard, so that's a lot more compared to before and it's a win against its closest competitors that only offer 2 airbags. 
What's also standard is the ASA 3.0 or the Advanced Safety Assist Version 3 which comprises of pre-collision warning, pre-collision braking, lane departure prevention, lane departure warning, front departure alert and pedal misoperation control. The Range Stopping Alza AV is capable of Level 2 autonomous driving with AV exclusive features such as Adaptive Cruise Control with Stop and Go functionality, Lane Keep Control, Blind Spot Monitor and Rear Cross Traffic Alert. It is also the first Perodua to have rear disc brakes, hence the electronic parking brake with auto hold and of course it is to improve braking power. Lah. So, how does it drive? The all-new Alza is built on the DNGA platform, so it is a huge improvement as compared to before. It feels a lot tighter, a lot more composed, like it's very well put together. It rides very well, it's very smooth, and it absorbs bumps and potholes very confidently. The steering is nicely weighted, it is nice to hold as well. Now, is the 1.5 litre engine without a turbo enough? Around town, it is just right. In fact, it feels very nippy at slow speed and it is effortless. When on highway, normal cruising speed is very pleasant. But when you are about to overtake, that's when you go, ah, it would be nice if I have more power. It is not the quickest car to react when you want to overtake and when you're actually doing it, you can actually hear it struggle. There are three driving modes that you can choose from the steering wheel. There's normal, power and eco. It is much better on power mode to carry out an overtake. The car becomes more responsive to your input. And perhaps it will be helpful too when you are carrying full load with 7 in a car. How's the handling? Well, it is not a toge car lah, that I can say. So, janganlah bawa pergi toge eh. Now, here comes the big butts. Yeah, there are two of them. Firstly, I've seen and heard some describe the Alza's ride as premium. I'm not quite sure what's their definition of premium, but in my book, it is not premium. It's nowhere near premium. Yes, it is pleasant to drive, it rides fairly well, but you still feel a sense of hollowness as you're driving it. You hear and feel whatever that's going on underneath the car. So that's not a premium feel. But then again, stop and remind yourself, at this price, this is a very good package. The car is very well put together. Now, the second big butt, which is the adaptive cruise control and lane keep control, which seem to be not calibrated properly and it makes the autonomous driving experience not very pleasant. So, the lane keep control doesn't keep you centre in the lane. You get ping pong between the lines. As for the ACC, the car will brake and slow down for no apparent reason, especially when you're taking a bend and the middle cluster shows that there's a car in front of me. But in actual fact, there's no car in front of me in my lane. No, nothing paranormal, but it's just that the car picks up another car from the other lane. So for example, if I'm taking a right-hand bend, as the car is pointing towards the other car on the left lane, it picks up the car and tells itself, ah, there's a car in front of me, I need to slow down. I'm following the car. Which is quite annoying and I think a lot of the owners are experiencing this already. It is even more annoying for the person behind you because you're stopping and braking for no reason. But hey, the ACC with stop and go is a treat, especially when you're in a traffic jam. It takes all the stress away from you. Even though the all-new Alza is now more expensive than before, with how it looks, the platform it is built on, and the stuff it comes with, many would feel it is a fair price to pay, as proven by the numbers of bookings Perodua received. In fact, thanks to Perodua, more families can now afford to experience the advancement in the automotive industry and travel in a safer car. That's building cars people first, is the Perodua tagline, just in case you're wondering. So now that the Alza's lineup is within the price range of the Ativa, you will be wondering, wouldn't that cause cannibalism within Perodua? Well, I guess with Perodua's customer demographic that wide and varied, there's a car for everyone. Wait, or rather there's a buyer for every car. Wait, I mean, there's a model for every car. There's a model for everyone. 
So is this car for you? Well, if you're on the lookout for a decent family car that is safe, can fit 7 people and you don't plan to spend a lot of money on it, then yes, I think you'll be very happy with it. But if you're the kind who only want to spend a little but expect a lot out of it, then no. You should either up your budget or level your expectation. If you want to find out more about this all new Perdua Alza, do log on to autobuzz.my. If you like this video, do give us a thumbs up, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the logo or the subscribe button below. And remember to turn on the notification bell to receive updates whenever we upload an awesome video. Also, please support us by getting our t-shirts at autobuzz.shop. Terima kasih for watching. Ciao. Yikes, I've made a mess, but luckily, we're using truffle. Magic! And we are good to go.